being with us this morning. Good morning. So the mayor has argued that this vaccine mandate will stop the rise in COVID cases here in the city. You think it's a bad idea. Why is that? Well, first, let me start off by saying that I do believe the vaccine is effective. I myself have been vaccinated. I've held pop-up sites for uh, access to improve access in the community and helped hundreds of constituents get appointments for the vaccine. My issue is that this is a government overreach. Um, you know, the, the government's responsibility is to explain to people why it's safe, effective, show the science, show the facts, the benefits, and then allow people to make that decision with their doctor and what's best for themselves and their families. Uh, some people have autoimmune issues, and that's been a major concern in this as well. Uh, this is a government overreach by Mayor de Blasio, and it is unfairly targeting these businesses. Since the very beginning, the restaurants have been picked on, despite the fact that science shows a less than one to 2% transmission in restaurants. And so he's targeting these businesses and requiring these small business owners who are already short staffed, who are just trying to get by uh, and, have, and have, by the way, complied with everything thus far to try to help slow the spread and be good partners in our community. But he's targeting them and he's requiring them to now be his vaccine police. And that's just wrong. And that is why I support those who are, who are pushing back on this. And it's also an intrusion in private, pro private uh, privacy rights. You know, why should you, if you're vaccinated, have to show uh, a health care card to every maitre d' when you walk into a restaurant? So I think it's just an inappropriate government overreach, and that is why I support the lawsuit and thank, you know, attorneys Lou, Lou Gerlamino as well as Mark Fonti, who, have, who are representing these individuals. You know, a lot of these small businesses right now are training staff to actually look at these cards and look at these apps and know what's real and what's not real. How to enforce exactly. this. Is that a concern for you? How will these small businesses learn to enforce this appropriately? Absolutely. They are now tasked with not only being the vaccine police for the mayor, but now they have to determine whether these cards are authentic. And you know what? Then they get hit with fines. Wait, wait till you see what the mayor's going to do. He's going to fine them. He's going to he's going to really punish them. And, and, and this is not their role or responsibility. And, and that is the reason why it's just unfair. And I think that the mayor needs to reconsider this. Well, the mayor seems to be on a completely different page as you, because yesterday he had a conversation with the law department. He said that he has tremendous confidence and that they had very strong legal position with this mandate against the lawsuits. So number one, is that true? Number two, if this does play out, how long are we going to see and how long is this going to take until you see who wins this? Well, it's no surprise that the mayor and I are at odds, um, but what I'll say is we'll leave it to the attorneys. That's why we have courts. Uh, I'm confident that our attorneys uh, will make a strong case in this and, and protect uh, New Yorkers' privacy rights, uh, people's health care decisions, as well as our small businesses. And how fast can we see maybe an answer to this then? Well, that's the question. We, we, they, they requested an injunction, so hopefully that a decision on that will be made in, you know, within, the, within a week. We'll see how slow the courts uh, or how fast uh, the courts operate here. We also want to get your take on the situation in Afghanistan, which has deteriorated very quickly. You were uh, a member of the Foreign Affairs Committee. Uh, President Biden was interviewed about all of the situation that's going on there, and he basically said there's no way to have gotten out without chaos ensuing. Do you believe that to be true? Uh, no, I, I think that the president did not have a plan here. They did not have a strategy in place. Uh, the, the first thing would have been to evacuate our citizens. That first and foremost should have been the priority before the troops were withdrawn. Uh, what has happened here is they had they went into this with really little little preparation, little contingency plans. They allowed the Taliban to take our weapons. And they, and, and they used it now to take over the entire country. I think for Congress, our first and, and foremost priority is the evacuation of our uh, families that reside in our district. Just yesterday, uh, we worked very diligently to ensure that we were able to evacuate a family from Brooklyn, a mother with three small children, uh, the, the, the youngest one being one year old, um, making sure that they were able to board one of these military planes and go to Qatar. So I urge people, if they have a family that they know of in Afghanistan that needs assistance to contact your member of Congress or one of the U.S. Senators uh, who have a direct connect to the State Department to do this. But certainly there will be hearings in the Foreign Affairs Committee, I think as early as next week, to find out what went wrong here because the intelligence showed that there would be a quick takeover 
if they were to withdraw the troops and they were not prepared for this, nor were they prepared with the visa program in place to ensure that our Afghan partners who worked alongside our military men and women could be evacuated as well. And they are the first that will be targeted by the Taliban. And that is a very big concern. And I'll, I'll say this, between what's happening in Afghanistan right now, where now there's a hotbed for terrorism, with the open borders that the president has created, where they've already caught, by the way, people on the FBI terror watch list walking over, um, and the, the attempt by the left to defund and, and take away resources from our law enforcement. This is a very concerning position, especially going into this 20th anniversary of 9-11. We can never allow the slogan, never forget, to just become a slogan. And that, that is the thing. It is more than that. And, and we need to be very diligent here. We urge the president to take action, immediate action, to, to protect us. Based on your knowledge of the situation, what could have been done differently there? Well, I think first and foremost, uh, they needed to have the visa process in place. They needed to be able to identify where uh, our Afghan interpreters and partners that worked alongside us are located so they could be evacuated. They should have worked on evacuating uh, members of the embassy as well as the United States citizens there. They don't even have an estimate of how many citizens we have there right now that are seeking to evacuate the the you know it's anywhere between 10 to 40,000 they're saying so so not being able to identify number one you know where our citizens are which afghan uh, partners needed to be evacuated improving the visa system to make sure it was ready in place which was something that congress had called on for months we even passed legislation to require the state department to do this um, all of that should have been done in place before you withdraw the troops. And certainly the majority of members of Congress and Americans do want our men and women to come home. Absolutely, but it had to be done in a proper way and there need, it needs to be conditional and, and certainly having more troops there today than when the president first announced withdrawal shows what an utter failure this has been. Representative Valley Talks, I just wanted to bring this home. Um, one last question. Do you have any information? Uh, the NYC Hospitality Alliance is in support of this mandate, and they're saying that because they'd rather have this than have that shut down again, which I'm sure everyone can agree on. But did you get any information um, on what threshold needs to be hit for that shutdown to happen again? Because they're making these mandates in arbitrary and, I guess, things exactly. that may not happen. Exactly. So, so I mean, they're saying they'd rather have this than that, but really we should have neither at this point. Um, and, and the reality is, is that the mayor, the, the governor, you know, they're, they're basing this on very arbitrary, they're, they're not using the science. Again, I said one to two percent of the rest of spread in the restaurant, much smaller percentage than at many other industries, number one. And number two, you know, they'll just change the goalposts as they go along. And that's part of the frustration with the people in New York, the small businesses, the goalpost keeps changing. And I think that the mixed messaging you're getting out of the CDC, as well as our government leaders, is what created some sort of hesitancy to begin with. So again, I think our job is to, again, stress the effectiveness, how effective it is, uh, how you can protect yourself, your family, your loved ones, give them the facts, the information, and access to this vaccine. I'm, I plan on holding more pop-ups uh, to encourage people who are, in, particularly in those communities where we're yeah. seeing the, the lowest vaccination rate, to try to encourage it, but let's not do a government overreach here and okay. mandate that people get it. And by the way, the mandates on our nursing home personnel, that's gonna have a major issue. Here on Staten Island, they're issuing a $10,000 signing bonus just to get staff at the local nursing homes. What is this mandate gonna do to that? It's gonna make it even more difficult to get, to get staff. Congresswoman Nicole Maliotakis, we appreciate you joining us this morning. Thanks so much. Thank you.